Well, welcome to our social painting session. I'm Julie Swanson Davis for Blick Art Materials. I'm also a designer and instructor for Art Defined, a social painting studio. This is one of the paintings I've designed for group painting sessions. Even if you've never tried painting before, you will be able to create this scene. Just follow along with my demonstration. Now you're probably going to need about two hours to complete this, but the video demonstration is going to be much, much shorter because you're going to be pausing between steps. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is put on our apron. On the palette I have here in front of me, I've placed three pumps of chrome yellow, two pumps of burnt sienna, one pump of green oxide, one pump of phthalo blue, and three pumps of blockout white. I also have a separate bowl over here in which I've placed four pumps of Blickrylic Polymer Gloss Medium. Now, if you're pouring paint from a pint or a quart bottle, just take a look at my palette and you'll see about how much you're going to need to make this painting. Now, wait a second. Did she forget a color? Aren't those poppies red? Oh, I love surprises. And I also love to use a little mixed media with my paintings. It just adds to the fun. These flowers are made with paper, not paint. So for this session, everyone also needs a sheet of red paper. Now be careful which paper you purchase for this because most construction paper is not light stable and those poppies will fade to a dusty pink rather quickly. I'm using 9 by 12 sheets of Holiday Red Blick Premium construction paper and I could also recommend True Ray construction paper. We're going to start with a wide bristle brush and some white paint. So load that brush up and paint the top part of your canvas. Working left to right, and we want to get a good solid coat. And I'd say about the top third of your canvas, you're going to just paint white. Now come on, who can't handle this, right? All right, now without washing off your brush, let's just go into our yellow and add a little bit of that and just put that right underneath the white paint that you've put on. Now, do you notice how I am making big, broad strokes and I'm going from one side of the canvas to the other? And I'm even lifting my brush off the edge of the canvas when I get to the side. A lot of times beginners will start painting and you'll see them making little brush strokes like this. Well, and you'll end up seeing lots of little lines in there. And for some paintings, you know, that's going to work just great. But for this painting, I'd love for you to start out by just going from one side to another. And let's go up into our white now. At the angle I'm sitting at, it's really easy for me to just go up and down on a diagonal stroke. If you're sitting facing a canvas, you might even go straight up and down. But let's just break through that yellow with some more white. Okay, now let's go back, get a little more yellow paint. And I'm going to continue to paint the yellow down to almost the bottom of the canvas. And fill the space up here and let's do the diagonal stroke again. These do not have to be perfectly aligned. Just smoothing out our paint. Now let's rinse our brush off. Clean it off with a paper towel. Okay, we're gonna add just a little bit of brown paint down here at the bottom, like so. Now this easel that I'm using has a little bit of a lip to it. So for this step, I'm just going to lift this forward so it's sitting on top of that lip and make sure that I get everything painted. You don't want to end up with a little white stripe there when your painting's done. We're going to take that right up to the yellow paint and then let's do that vertical or diagonal as I'm doing stroke and take some of that brown right on up into some of that yellow. 
Now the last step is I'm just going to add just a little bit of green at the bottom. And I'm not going to go clean my brush. I'm going to go right into the green paint. And I'm just going to stroke up almost like I'm putting grass in down here at the bottom. I pick it up so I don't get that lip in my way. Some little strokes of green paint. All right. Okay, well, now is a good time to first of all put the brush in the water so the paint doesn't dry in it and take a break. We're going to let the background dry before we start doing anything in the foreground, any of the flowers on top of it. So take a break, get a, get a beverage if you'd like it, wander around, see what everybody else is doing, then come back and hit play again and we'll be ready to go for the next step. Well, welcome back. Did you have a nice break? All right, now it's time for us to move on to the paper. The background should be nice and dry. It can be a little bit wet still, maybe down below, but most of the white and yellow paint up here should be dry. So with the red paper, first of all, fold it in half. And it doesn't have to be perfectly in half, but you tear it. Now take half of that and tear it in half. And this other half, Tear it in half. So we have it in quarters now. Certainly doesn't have to be straight. All right, I'm going to start off with one of these pieces and I'm going to create my first flower petal, poppy petal. And I'm just going to tear out an oval. It does not have to be a perfect oval. And on the back side, I'm going to brush a little polymer gloss medium. And let's see, let's start with the flower that's going to be closest to me, shall I? And then I will just brush some more gloss medium over the top of that petal. You're probably wondering what polymer gloss medium is. A very simple answer is that it's acrylic paint that doesn't have any color in it. In our Art Defined sessions, we just call it glue because that's really what we use it for. And you're probably wondering why we don't just use white glue. Well, because medium has the same formulation as acrylic paint. It dries at the same rate, and it's intended to bind with the paint, so it's just super compatible. And glue can cause cracks, and if it's used with wet acrylic, it just doesn't bond with the surface as well. So, polymer gloss medium, like glue, is milky white when it's wet, but it will dry perfectly clear. Now, do you see what I'm doing here? I've put two ovals together, and I'm starting to build the shape of a flower. Now these do not have to be perfect ovals. In fact, it's going to be actually be better if they're not perfect ovals because flower petals wouldn't be perfectly shaped either. But for each piece that you put on there, put polymer gloss on the back side and polymer gloss over the front. You will notice that I am overlapping each petal that I put on so I don't end up with a space in the middle where I can see the background through it. All right, well we want to make our flowers different sizes too. We don't want to make them all one size. So let's move this one way up to the top. Don't put it right against the top of the canvas. You're better off either wrapping it up around the top or bringing down just a little bit. Save all your scraps. We're going to use the scraps towards the end. And all right, there's my second poppy. I'm going to make one more like that. I know that my example has five larger ones. If you'd like to uh, fill your field with poppies, go right ahead. You can have it even, even more densely populated with poppies than my example. Okay. Now, we want to put some smaller poppies around. 
Um, these will be the ones that aren't quite opened yet. They're just buds. So to do that, you can take some of your scrap pieces and just tear. Oh, these might be a little bit more of a long oval. In fact, mine even looks a little bit on the square side. And let's just fill some of those in around on the canvas. Okay, there we go. Now, we don't need to let this dry. We can just keep right on painting. Let's put our big brush into the water. Now the next brush that I'm going to use it's still a square brush. That's this one right here. A little bit of a square brush. It's much smaller than the big one that I had though. In fact, this is a number two and this is what you call a flat brush. I'm going to take some of my yellow paint now. Just on the back three petals of each one, I'm just going to make some short little strokes and I'm just going to kind of ignore the front petal, but I'll go around it. It's almost like I'm creating a little crown over the top of that front petal. Just short little strokes. Let's clean that brush off and take just a little bit of your white paint now. And you're going to come right back over the top of those yellow strokes we just painted. You might have to go back and forth more with these little brushes. And make a stroke about half the size of what we just painted. And because the yellow is wet, I think I just called it orange, but that's because it looks orange when it goes over the red. The yellow is wet, so it blends with it just a little bit. Okay, now the last step to make these truly poppies, you can put that small brush into your water now, the small flat. And now I have a round brush. It's called a round because it has a rounder shape with a little bit of a point on it. And I'm just going to paint a little, little dots right in the center of the flower. Yes, it's blue paint and you're saying, but poppies are black inside. Um, if you put this blue in there, it actually ends up looking black. All right. All right. Well, now we need to put some stems on here. All right. I'm going to use the same brush and I'm going to go to my green paint. Now, this green in itself is, it's an okay color. But I really like it when I mix just a little bit of the blue in with it. Now what you have to watch out for with these round brushes is that they can get so full of paint that you can hardly control them. So do you see what I'm doing to my brush? I'm just kind of running against the side of my palette. If you're using uh, a paper, a regular foam plate, you know, you can hit the edge with it. But I want to get some of that paint cleaned off of there so that I can see the shape of the brush again. All right, let's start with our big, big flowers. And I'm just going to start at the edge and create a line that goes down to the bottom and bring it back up a couple of times. Now, my paint is getting a little dry, so let me just add a little water to that, and the next one will probably flow a little better off my brush. Once again, I want to make sure that I uh, don't have a nice overloaded fat brush. Now if you have a petal, a flower up here that is going to have to go behind another flower, here's what I like to do. If I have another brush, let me grab a dry one. Okay, or a pencil even. You can kind of see, mark where it is it's going to hit here. All right. Now, take that pencil again, and, or, pen, or brush handle, and you can see where that stem should come out below. And just continue it on down. 
Okay, for our smaller buds, we do the same thing. The paint can come right up over the top. It should probably be a little wider to connect with the flower. These don't have to be straight stems at all. They can certainly curve a little bit. And I even noticed with the poppies I saw before that sometimes they hang down a little, don't they? Get a little kind of a shepherd's crook with them. So I think I'll do that to these last two. Last step, I'm just going to put a few strokes lightly with a smaller brush along the bottom of the canvas, indicating, of course, some extra foliage, some grass. Well, there you go. That wasn't so hard, now was it? I hope you really enjoyed the poppy painting. Stay tuned, we've got another painting for you.